It's another CES meeting. It is May the 4th of 2022. And this is one of those days that has two nerd holidays associated with it, of course. May the 4th and Cinco de Cuatro. Um, <laughs> May the 4th be with you all. Um, the, uh, today we have a topic that ZB is going to present on the compartment API. We have some open questions and wanted to talk with our friends at Modable, Patrick and Peter, um, about the value type. Peter is finishing another meeting and joining us soon. Awesome. Uh, yeah. So ZB, I'll let you uh, prime the topic. Go ahead. Okay. <clears throat> yeah. So uh, let me start by sharing the screen, maybe. Um, I'm not sure if I want to start here, but maybe let's, uh, since this is the least important stuff. Uh, so I was experimenting with uh, some means to uh, inject uh, node internals uh, into a uh, what Endo is building uh, so that it uh, it would actually get accepted because just giving it a, a bunch of key values uh, didn't work. And that means there needs to be a static module record. Uh, and that is uh, one of the places where uh, we might think of slightly changing the API so that the um, the modules <clears throat> entry that we're providing uh, to the compartment would not require going through the actual compartments uh, internals. I think I have some bookmarks here where uh, there's uh, there's this concept of an exit module um, in import hook, uh, at least for endo. Uh, and these are the modules that we're passing from the outside, but for them to actually work, uh, they need to be found in the module aliases. And the only way to get there, uh, is to actually, uh, go through their deferred exports being created first and being the thing that is, uh, becoming uh, the namespace for the module. <clears throat> so that's, uh, that's one thing I was considering uh, putting into the design uh, of any changes we want to make to the static module record. Uh, so it's uh, not going to be necessary anymore uh, to do this. But this is just a, a bunch of context. And I think what we want to focus on uh, is more about introducing uh, stuff like import meta and the hook. Uh, so the idea is to make import meta work. And while the plumbing itself to make it work is already here in the pull request, uh, the most important thing is how do we even figure out uh, what the URL is? And even worse, uh, how do we provide the resolve function? Uh, so there is import meta dot resolve, which is going to be expensive to uh, create. So instead of creating it for every module, uh, we should create it for the ones that uh, actually needed. And there's this part that analyzes uh, the, the whole thing, uh, analyzes the the module being loaded, and it can already find what's uh, sitting on the import uh, as a keyword, so any member expression. So import.meta.something uh, is going to uh, land in import meta properties, and then I'm wrapping it into these uh, temporary flags, uh, uses import meta, and a list of properties that are actually being used. And based on that, I can know if I want to, uh, yeah, uh, let's find uh, GitHub. You're trying to be helpful. Okay, yeah. Oh, it was here. So uh, based on the fact that the module is actually using uh, import meta, we can uh, put stuff on the meta var coming from import meta hook. And there's a bunch of 
times and places we can uh, call that. So this is only one of them. I so want to ask and, a, clar a clarifying question. Yeah. Uh, mm -hmm. So when we say use, uh, what we mean is mention, correct? It, it, ju it just matters whether import.meta appears te uh, textually uh, inside the text of the module. It doesn't matter whether the expression is ever evaluated. Is that correct? Yes. Yes, that's true. If it's in a part of the code that's not reachable, it's still going to be detected. So we're doing that in the static analysis time. I see okay. a hand from Matthew. Yeah. Yeah, I, I wanted to also clarify uh, if you were only detecting import meta or are you trying to do detection of which properties of import meta are used and yeah. how would you ever be able to do that? Uh, I'm not 100% sure this is working, but the, the thing you saw uh, is attempting to uh, detect the properties from uh, import meta and I had, uh, I had two different implementations. This is just one of them. Uh, so I, it- I, I don't see how might... that's possible since you can always save import meta in something else and, and, and access it any other time. It can't be done reliably and we probably shouldn't do it as part of the compartment standard API. Uh, ZB is already doing static analysis for heuristic static analysis for common JS. So there's, we have a certain amount of comfort doing that. Okay. But, so this is heuristics. With uh, but this is, uh, this is actually in the static module record. This is not the one that we're doing for, uh, CJS. Uh, this is the one that we're doing for the, uh, standard modules. And here, uh, I implemented the rewrite uh, from import.meta into the uh, hidden variable, uh, dollar h underscore, uh, etc. And uh, since it was already here, uh, <clears throat> uh, and each other uh, element had the analyze step, I thought, let's see how much I can do with the analyze step. So this uh, draft has an implementation of detecting some fields uh, that happen to be on the meta. So we can use that and make it a bit more uh, specific uh, because I'm pretty sure we will want to differentiate between uh, import.meta.static fields versus uh, import meta uh, resolve usage. Hey. Let's continue to see what the rest of your proposal is. I know that we're not going to, well, I suspect that we're not going to want to pursue that too deeply, but um, let's let's see how it gets hooked up toward uh, with the rest of your proposal. Yeah. Um, not much, to be honest, uh, but there's two places where I started considering putting um, the use of this information. So currently, if I'm using import meta, an import meta hook is available. I'm trying to uh, get it either at the time the module is loaded because that's when uh, we're awaiting things. Uh, and that means import meta hook uh, could be awaited. Uh, another convenient place uh, to have the import meta hook is in module instance, but uh, in module instance, as far as I remember, we're dealing with a situation where we uh, should run synchronously. Uh, and that's one of the things to figure out because if we can, yeah, this is, uh, this is all synchronous. Uh, so if we can, uh, it would be very convenient to run import meta hook here, but it would have to be synchronous and I, I expect that might be a problem. The, uh, the uh, for compatibility's sake, right now, the only thing we're aware of that programs count on obtaining from import meta is import meta URL. This question. Yes, and eventually uh, the uh, resolve function as well. So the resolve uh, function. There, there's a. Uh, let allow me to clarify. Um, as far as TC39 is going to be concerned, uh, there will be nothing on import meta. It's a, it, it's, it's a, the, the contents of import meta are beyond anything except empty is host defined. Um, there are three hosts of interest today. One of which is the web, which does provide import meta URL. There's node, which provides import meta URL and 
I think is going to add import meta resolve and resolve it's is already there. Yeah, import meta resolve is uh, is node specific, um, and there's a chance it could end up on the web, but it would have to be driven by an import an import map um, to you know in order to have a meaningful result. Um, XS provides uh, and correct me if I'm wrong, Patrick. Uh, yeah. import.meta.uri, not URL, and the URI corresponds closely to the module specifier, more closely to the module specifier than a URL does. Um, yeah. uh, by default, no, following our uh, last discussion about that, uh, import meta is an empty object. Okay. Uh, uh, for like everything, except if you uh, add something to it when you are returning from the load hook or the module map hook and so on and so on. So yeah. there's no, uh, there's nothing inside Info Meta. The, uh, in our runtime, we populate the URI uh, property of Import Meta in, for some, for some runtime that are that are using it, but but it's not. Uh, there, there's nothing. It's really it's so platform specific that even uh, from access point of view, it it it's really depending on the the host and everything else. Yeah, Does that makes sense. True. So when in the implementation you are using in XSnap, import meta will be an empty object by default. Um, yeah, I hope that's clarifying. Go ahead, ZB. Yeah. Uh, I'm actually more interested in uh, digging deeper in what it currently is in excess. Uh, so my question would be, where is the import meta object coming from uh, so that it's surfaced to the loader and loader can add stuff in there? Uh, can you... Uh, elaborate a little on how it traces through the whole thing? Yes, absolutely. Uh, the, the, uh, let's take the load hook because it's the most obvious thing. Uh, the, the, the load hook returns what I call a module descriptor, or you call that an envelope or something like that. I mean, it's an object with several properties. One, one of them could be Meta, which will which will be uh, copy into uh, the uh, import meta object of the module. So the the uh, I can is, is so envelope that, is, is that making any sense? So you you uh, yeah yeah yeah. So uh, every, every time you, every time you load a module. You have uh, the possibility to provide uh, an object. The object is, co is copied into the import meta with the object assign uh, semantic. So calling, I mean, exactly that. Calling, in fact, that. And and so um, the and I mean that that works well. And uh, I. Uh, I think I no, I, I'm sure I commit several examples of that in the in the the XSnap example. Uh, and um, yes, let me see that. Compartment module. Yes. Yeah, there are several of them. The um, you share the screen for that or let, let me see. Let me see what, if I can find. That. Before before you unshare the current screen, um, line one seventy two is a comment that has this highlighted very strange identifier, new VA meta varlu. Yeah, it's just a find and replace artifact. This is very much a work in progress. Okay. Sorry about it. <laughs> okay. You want, you want me to share my screen? I can try. Yes. Uh, my bandwidth can fail, but let's try. If it fails, Patrick, just share, uh, just share the, a URL 
uh, to something on GitHub, perhaps. Yeah, I can share a link and I'll open it. That's sorry. That, maybe not. Yeah. Nope. Looking good. Yeah. Oh, okay. Good. Yeah. So I can try to make that a little bigger. Is that yes? Oh yeah. Cool. Not very quite big. Sorry. Yeah, the size you. is okay. The size is okay. Okay. So yeah. here, here we have. Uh, uh, we, we create two new static module records, um, which allow us to check if there is uh, uh, to uh, get import meta URI and so on. Uh, the compartment is having a module map with two uh, envelopes, uh, I mean descriptor, module descriptor. Uh, it's a record module descriptor, so it has a record, this one, and it adds uh, some meta object with a URI property, which is arbitrary, of course, it's, uh, it's something that it can be whatever, whatever you want. Uh, so if I do uh, a way C import of this one, cb.js, okay, it will load that, and uh, and so this will import a from dot I mean dot slash a dot js, which will get that record and so on. If uh, and then if I print the default, I will have a which is that string plus that string which is b dot js. So it's completely it's completely open. Uh, there is no uh, like no constraint to what you can put inside the meta property of the module envelope, and uh, and in and the, the property are uh, copied with a sign to the import meta object here. Uh, so that's that's the I mean the simple uh, a simple way of doing it. Uh, it also work. I don't know if I don't know if I have an example there. It also work with uh, if the load uh, hook return that kind of thing. Yes, here we are. So um, here we have uh, another uh, another compartment which has uh, a load hook. Uh, which takes a specifier, and this is uh, this is really to test. It it builds a module on the fly with export default import meta URI and uh, put the specifier into the URI. So when you do C import A, the result is A. If you do C import B, the result is B. Uh, B, the result is B, and so on. So that. It works the same uh, in the module map, the module map hook and the load hook for uh, as far as meta is, uh, is concerned. Uh, okay. the, uh, the, sa the same thing works also with the import no hook. So, uh, and so on, but that's not that the concern. I, I don't think I, I tried it with the module map. No, there is no, but it's the same. So there is no, yeah. uh, no, ch no chance it will be different. So the, um, the, the important point uh, for me, and the access does not implement yet the import meta hook because um, I didn't know when to call it basically. And, um, and so the, what I read is that, which is like, I mean, uh, a little strange to me, is that you want to add like an extra step in the, the module machinery. Like we have all the steps uh, that are described uh, in the TC39 spec uh, in some way, but could be described in a different way, but we have several like, already asynchronous step for like 
loading, binding, I mean, all the, all the things. And, uh, and so the, I'm a little afraid to add a new uh, asynchronous step there. So my, my instinct would, would have been to call the import meta hook uh, the first time import meta was really accessed by a module. Uh, and, and so it's really the, lazy. Qu qu question, when you say yes. accessed, when you say accessed. Uh, like when, when the module, so uh, when the, the module is really executing import meta, dot something okay whatever so the, when, the, uh, when the expression is evaluated yes when the when the directive the import meta it's a special kind of thing so when that is evaluated uh okay. if if the module doesn't have yet a populated import meta thing it will call the import meta hook we will populate okay. it and uh that so, that so, so just to make sure i understand if the import meta expression appears statically, but it appears in dead code, then yes. the hook would never be called, correct? No. Indeed. Okay. No, it, it's really a, a, the execution of the import meta dot something that you will, you will get that. Let's call uh, that, uh, I mean, for the purposes of this conversation, let's call that option A. Yeah, yes, <laughs> that's, that makes sense. Okay. For for option A, I even thought of uh, making uh, import dot meta either a getter on uh, an import reference or a proxy uh, for the sake of reading the values from it, uh, so that we would just tie into it directly. So the idea would be that uh, it's uh, all evaluated at runtime. This means uh, we need to put a bit more care into securing uh, the actual import meta hooks uh, evaluation, and it has to be synchronous. <clears throat> so that's option A. Option B is we run import meta hook uh, if we know that import meta uh, exists in the source code, uh, e even if it's not being uh, called, uh, but we also do it synchronously. Uh, so that can happen in the instantiation uh, stage. And I'm not proposing to add any additional steps uh, to the whole process. But if we want to have a asynchronous import meta hook, uh, that would give us time to resolve things and build up the URL. Uh, we could uh, implement it at uh, the load time. So th these are the three options. Option A is uh, effectively a getter. Uh, option B is uh, at instantiation time synchronously. And option C is a synchronous hook. Uh, and that can happen only when we're loading or linking. Um. So Maybe not even linking, just loading. Let's just talk about option C. Uh, let's get more concrete on it. I see no reason why it should be any other. If we went with option C, I think that the only reasonable time, uh, the, the most obvious reasonable time to do that would be um, immediately after calling the load hook, right? Um, and if it happens at that time, then there's no reason to not do the same behavior within the load hook, um, provided that the static module record constructor provides the metadata that it needs in order to perform the operation and then just include it on the meta property of the property of the module descriptor. Is that about right? Yeah. Uh, question? Go ahead, Mark. Um, so there, um, if this is, as isn't this being asynchronous incompatible with import now? Uh, it would be. Uh, I, 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 that's sort of an orthogonal issue because as far as async versus synchronous, in the cases where it would need to be synchronous, um, Modable implements a specialization of a compartment API where there's an, uh, a load now hook. Oh, I pardon ah. me. And uh, yeah. Ah, okay. but, uh, the, uh, can I, uh, I would like to ask, uh, why do you need 
uh, in both meta to be asynchronous. So, so both meta hook, sorry. To be I, what, what I propose, what, what I'm suggesting is that option C is um, incoherent because it could be boiled into the load hook and we wouldn't need an import meta hook at all. Oh, well, uh, that makes sense. Yes. Yeah. Uh, yeah, though in order for that to be true, the static module record would need to return an object that tells you whether the import meta is needed. And I think that that's also reasonable um, to allow the static module record constructor to do some additional static analysis and add a property so that the load hook could use it. Okay, let me, let me, let me just um, keep wanting to clarify this one issue. Um, so what we mean by needed is that it's statically mentioned, that it statically appears, yes. not, not has nothing to do with whether it's evaluated. Right. In that case, we would not be able to distinguish whether it was evaluated at the load time at the at that time. Whereas with option A, we would be able to be even more lazy. Okay. Um, so one reason why um, I'm nervous about option A, this is by no means a a, uh, a disqualifying consideration, but um, the generally. Um, the an expression um, uh, doesn't have memory from a first evaluation to other evaluations. Either the expression evaluates to something that already exists, uh, and in which the whatever side effects that might have been caused by its already existing have already happened. Uh, or it's evaluated afresh every time with no, um, uh, um, so the the you know the kind of um, reentrancy attack issue, right? If if the if the hook has side effects, then having the side effects happen before the mo anything in the module itself is evaluated is fair you know protects the module from any uh, reentrancy uh, and having it. Uh, evaluate um, having the hook happen each time it's evaluated means that the um, that you know that the, the eval that the expression is effectively a, a procedure call to whatever those things are, but having the side effects happen the first time and then memoized so it doesn't happen later times for an expression seems weird. Like I said, it's not disqualifying, but it seems weird. So um, having it. Hap having it happen up front before module evaluation happens and having it uh, happen there, therefore based on static appearance rather than evaluation does seem cleaner to me. Uh, I also don't see any reason why the semantics of import meta uh, would need asynchrony. So doing it both static and synchronous seems um, like the, the, the simpler all around way to approach this that's adequate. So what I'm, what I'm hearing is that you're favoring option B at this point. Yeah, I think so. Okay. Um, let's, uh, so just to summarize where we are so far in the conversation, I think that we are, um, going to narrow the conversation to the distinctions between options A and B option C is off the table except for possibly coming back and having another conversation about revealing whether import.meta is uttered in the source as a property of the static module record constructed by that constructor. And we'll just table that issue for now. Um, the distinction between A and B, I believe the biggest distinction between options A and B is their failure modes. Um, or if there is a distinction, that's the important one. Um, uh, and there might be, and, and knowing that A and B both tend, both fail during the execution of the module might be important. Uh, if the import meta function throws an error, including range error, because the stack was already full at the time it was called, um, with option A, you're going to get an exception at any time code in that module is used, there's a potential for an exception to be thrown at any time with option yes. A. 
with option A, it would only be on first evaluation of the special. Yes, and first evaluation can be deferred past the initialization phase of the module. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, to um, uh, not really answer, but uh, why uh, why there is option A? It's because I mean there is one I mean other other import the dynamic import call is very different the first time you load the module and then the next time. Oh, yes. that, that's true. There's a precedent there for sure. So that I mean there's something there that that's why I was thinking about that in that direction. Mm -hmm. But uh, I would agree that option B is simpler. I mean, like, for sure. Okay. Yeah. Uh, so uh, to be concrete, option B, uh, my understanding of option B is that the import meta hook would be called at the beginning of the synchronous execution of the initialization of that module, in, which is to say the first turn of its initialization if you take into account um, the top level of weight. Um, and so if an error were thrown at that time, um, it would foul uh, the promise for that module and any module that depends upon it um, before any of the code in that module has an opportunity to execute. Um, there, let's, there might be an even more defensive position to stand, which would be to say, um, and let's call it option D, which is an option B variant, um, that all of the import meta hooks for the working set that are about to be executed synchronously would be collectively, this would introduce a new step, a new step before initialization that would be synchronous with initialization, but call all of the import meta hooks for all of the modules in the working set that uttered import meta before any of them have an opportunity to execute, in which case, in which case a, 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 a dependency would have an opportunity to foul the module record for things that depend upon it, which I think is disqualifying. So let's drop option D entirely. Okay, I, I would agree, yes. <laughs> good, yeah. good. So, so option B sounds like the, is more and, and more looking like the winner. Yeah. Can we come back uh, once again? Uh, why, uh, why do you want the code to the import meta hook? to be depending on the existence of import meta in the module, just to spare something or? Yeah, the, this is a requirement that's coming from our friends who work on Node.js. And yes. in Node.js, they introduced import meta resolve as a property that they embellish their import meta with. And import meta resolve by necessity is a closure because it has to clo close over the refer URL yes. in order okay. to do its job. And because yes. creating that closure is expensive, it's a huge overhead for large module graphs that mostly do not take advantage of that feature. Okay. Of course, this means that there's no such thing as an a la carte import meta. So if there are two features that are both expensive that end up on the import meta, there's no way to distinguish based off of the simple utterance of import meta, which of those features need to be initialized. I, I think that's a, that's a necessary consequence of the fact that import meta is an expression and the expression results in a first class value that, can, that you can you know, pass around. So, um, uh, so I think that's just a necessary consequence of that design. Would it, <clears throat> would it be okay to consider that <clears throat> detecting if import meta is mentioned is an optimization. That's like, um, how to say, uh, uh, <clears throat> desirable, but not required. Uh, I don't think we can take that position because it would reduce the portability, or rather, I think that the only healthy answer to, the only healthy way to phrase that for the ecosystem, such that code written on one platform can be transported to another platform and work the same way, would be um, to say that it that option A 
is an optimization of another behavior essentially equivalent to option C, right? Um, that 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 the only way to make it to phrase this to, to the standard such that it is an optimization that does not need to be implemented by every host would be to say that hosts have the option of implementing options C or A. Um, I, I, I would hook is is oh, called well, what I what I what I meant is like uh, so you have a compartment which has an import meta hook, okay? You load a module, and uh, <clears throat> if we if we choose option B, it means that the import meta hook is called it's synchronous and it's called before the execution of the module. Yes. Mm -hmm. Okay, so the question is, uh, can a host always call the import meta hook, or does the host ask to check if the module mentioned import meta? I would, I would recommend, I, I would strongly recommend that it's uh, if th that we specify if the module uh, mentions import meta, because the to to leave it at. Um, uh, you know, to, to, to leave this as a choice, it's an observable choice. It's not a, it's not a unobservable optimization. Uh, and that makes the platform more non-deterministic. Um, uh, if there is a strong reason for it, I mean, if this is an important optimization to enable this to be a choice, um, uh, you know, then, then we should discuss it. But I don't think there's a big payoff here. I think we can just make it be uh, exactly if import meta appears statically. That's my feeling as well. Okay. You, uh, you remember that, uh, I mean, some of the, the modules we are importing uh, in access are already compiled, okay? So detecting if uh, import, uh, and we don't have the source. So in uh, runtime. So in uh, detecting if import meta uh, is mentioned uh, is of course possible, but uh, either requires to flag the the module, which is not currently planned, or to uh, go through the bytecode to check if import meta is mentioned somewhere in the bytecode. So. Uh, uh yeah, I would certainly prefer the flagging because then it's everything still O1. Yeah. Um, is that hard? Ah, no, ah, no, I, I don't I don't think that way. Just um, I don't um, since I, I have no picture of how expensive uh, it is to the import meta who can be, I'm I'm not sure to understand why. We want so much to avoid to call it. The yeah, network. I think it's as simple as that. There are node applications with thousands, tens of thousands of modules in their working set, and that okay. and initial and startup times matter for node, um, especially oh. in the cases of command line utilities. Oh. And Lambda. Yes. Okay. Yeah. Um, so this could bring us back to uh, putting hints about meta being there uh, on the static module record, and even the compiled modules uh, would then have those hints uh, available. Uh, so we put it in that stage of the process, and your compilation produces the the bytecode and the meta information. Uh, about uh, it being uttered or not. Yeah, and, and, that, and that compilation already has collects metadata like the imports and exports bindings. The bindings array is a side effect of, that gets reflected on the static module record. Um, I think that that just leaves the, I, I think, uh, ZB, get me if I'm wrong, but I think that a summary of the conversation is that we're heavily leaning, if not decided upon option B, yeah, if we're not decided upon B, I have one more thing about A that you might not like, uh, which is <clears throat> import meta is supposed to uh, 
survive with its content. So if you put something on the import meta, uh, it, it should be uh, there. Uh, so I think we would have to implement it in a way that if a module uh, references import meta and then references it again, it necessarily needs to get the same uh, exact object reference from it. Uh, so you would have to uh, return it from cache. So the difference between the first call and every subsequent call needs to exist. My impression is that if XS were to implement this, they would just put the import. So they would hide an import meta um, uh, as an equivalent to an, un, uh, an unmentionable lexical variable and then populate it without even a function call, I imagine, whenever yes. it's used. Yes, something like that. But, but uh, um, yes, the, the, um, I have to, I have to check how complicated it is to uh, flag uh, modules uh, that they mention in port meta, because if it is not complicated, then option B is way, way simpler. Like, uh, I mean, I can code in port meta hook synchronously uh, before the execution of the module, and that's, that's simple enough. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I, sounds like, sounds like I, I don't know much about uh, um, how XS goes through the contents of modules, but in uh, in Endo, uh, it's uh, part of an existing step. It was just a matter of uh, taking a note uh, of detecting import meta in a pass that was already happening over the source code. So it's possible that for the sake of replacing all uh, imports with <clears throat> something else or uh, for the sake of transforms uh, in CES uh, or, or the compartment that detect uh, stuff like imports or HTML comments, uh, you're already making that pass over the source code. You no, know, for sure. Uh, I, I mean, XS uh, compiles everything into bytecode and it detects import meta. It just um, just that uh, that flag is not currently. I mean, there's no flag for that. It just generates uh, the, the white bytecode. But okay, I will I will investigate that. Uh, but uh, if we if we agree on the synchronous execution of the import meta hook, uh, then I can I can do the the work on, on that. I, I was afraid of the extra step, but but uh, more than about detecting the in both meta uh, presence. Okay. Yeah. yeah. For anything I'm doing, I don't really need it to be uh, asynchronous uh, because there's uh, places to put uh, any asynchronous work that would need to happen to provide the URL. It's mostly already being done. Uh, so the only concern is eventually getting to the point where someone wants to emulate uh, Node.js and the resolve uh, function if there is any jump that needs to happen, but I don't think so. So we're coming up on time, unfortunately. I think that we want to have more of this conversation. Um, well, I know I know we need to have more of this conversation. So. <laughs> Let's uh, it, let's it, uh. It, it sounded like we converged to a decision, though. Yes, there are more topics. <laughs> oh, okay. Okay. <laughs> um, but it's but I'm really gr uh, grateful that we've come to what appears to be a decision on option B, and we'll uh, we'll we'll go co-implement that and see how it works. Same for um, me. I will tell. Yeah. Um, the, uh, I'd like in future meetings to talk about the shape of the module descriptor. It's looking a lot like um, the module map and the load hook. Uh, if I read what Patrick has, has uh, shown in his examples correctly, um, the, types, the type signature, the overload for that object is consistent across all of load hooks return um, uh, and the module map value and the module map hooks return. 
That's exactly. And if that is the case, uh, it sounds like uh, it. If I, it, it sounds like we can simplify that type to not being a union of module namespace, static module record, or third party or first party, or an or a descriptor containing any of those. We could probably simplify it to simply being that all of those have a module descriptor object that can, and we switch on its shape, um, which, <laughs> which means that there's a possibility of having a shape that's dedicated to threading a module namespace object without uh, a, a, power, a, a module namespace object that carries powers um, in that position. And uh, and we we can have a conversation about that perhaps next week or in a subsequent week, depending on the availability of the people who need to participate. And I'll take care of that out of band. Um, that would be great. I, I think it's a it's a very important thing to agree on because uh, it, it it really it really helps both implementation and the usage I add of uh, compartment to have that descriptor thing being, uh, um, I mean, switched based on its shape and not having like multiple types and so on. And I think, I think it makes sense. The other thing I noticed is that it appeared to be that the static module record constructor was optional in most cases because the descriptor yes. shape and the argument exactly. of the static module record constructor exactly. were approximately the same. Exactly. I keep it ready for uh, because it was there and for the sake of continuing the discussion. But it's it could be a completely hidden thing uh, in the implementation. So yeah, which means that we could have an orthogonal conversation about whether the static module record constructor continues to be useful. I think it does, but for purposes of static analysis and not for the purposes of linkage, uh, it looks like we have a, a different solution to that problem. That's simpler and probably easier to get through standards. Um, yes. I, inevitably, when we propose static module constructor as a uh, triple barrel camel case name uh, in global namespace, I'm sure that we're going to hit resistance. Um, Agreed. <laughs> yeah. OK, um, that's time. I'm going to turn off the recording. Thank you for a very productive conversation today. Thank you. Thanks.